Let's talk about the quickest way possible to use Ableton Live as a metronome or a click track on stage. Now, I don't know if you're like me and you wake up in a sweat dreaming about using Ableton Live on stage and you're suddenly stressed because in your dream someone said, quick, we need a click track and we need it stat. Okay, maybe that's just me. But regardless, you, you'll likely find yourself in a situation sometime where uh, you're on stage and you need a click track, you need a metronome. Maybe it's for rehearsal, maybe it's for on stage. I wanna show you the fastest way possible in Ableton Live uh, to do that. And I wanna stress, we're not gonna talk about how to use a click and tracks. We're only gonna talk about using Ableton Live for a click track or a metronome in this video. So let's dive in. Now, for the sake of this video, I've got Ableton Live 11.1 .1 pulled up. I'm actually gonna open a Live 10 and a moment to show you what this looks like there. Uh, but let's start in Live 11.1 so that since that's our most recent version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang out over in Session View and I wanna go to my master track. So I'm gonna go up here to my master track and I'm gonna put my mouse to the left of where it says master. And you'll see that little bracket show up and I'm gonna click and drag. And as soon as I click and drag, you'll see uh, I see some tempo information show up. And if I drag a little bit further and keep going, then we'll see some time signature information show up as well too. And as you probably guessed, this is where we're gonna add our tempo and our time signature for our song. Now again, this is not the most complex way to do it or it's not the most comprehensive way to do it rather. Uh, so if your song has tempo changes, time signature changes, you can kind of adapt this principle to make it work. This is just quick, down and dirty, give me a click. So what I'm gonna do, what's my tempo? Let's say 95, we're gonna enter that. What's my BPM? It's probably 4-4, four, four, so I could click in there and activate it. But let's say it was 6-4, so let's go down to here, song two, let's give this like 78 BPM, and let's say this is 6-4, okay? Now, if you're in uh, a version previous to Live 11, like Live 10 or something, this is gonna look a little differently. So let's go over to Live 10. Uh, in this case, you could go to your scene and you could right click uh, and you could do edit launch tempo, edit time signature. Honestly, my favorite way to do this is just do Command R or Control R, uh, which is rename. And I'm just gonna type 120 BPM, uh, press space bar and then type my time signature four slash four and that's added to my Ableton Live set. So whether you're in Live 10, Live 11.1, .1, we wanna just create scenes uh, that represent each of our songs. And each of our scenes have a tempo and they have a time signature assigned to it, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete every single one of our tracks in our set and we're just gonna leave uh, the remaining track here, uh, this MIDI track. And I'm gonna double click to create MIDI clips that represent each one of my songs, okay? The reason I'm gonna do this is I need some sort of clip in each one of my scenes to launch this the way that I wanna launch it, the way I'm gonna teach you to. So this is just the fastest way possible. Now, you could use these mini clips to, for instance, name your songs, or you could use uh, this section of your master track here to name it if you want to. Uh, but this is the way that, um, that I just have done this for years and it works for me. Um, okay, so we've got our MIDI clips in there. Now, how do we actually use this live? I'm gonna go up here to this key button here to key assign. Uh, you could also use the keyboard shortcut Command K or Control K if you're on a PC to access this. And we're just gonna type one for song one, two for song two, and we'll just do three and four. Okay, now with that, I'm gonna hit Command K to get out of this, or again, if you're on a PC, Control K to get out of this. And what I've got is an Ableton Live set with, uh, I assigned four keys, I've really only got two tempos and time signatures assigned there. I've got a MIDI map, a MIDI clip in each one of my scenes so that I can launch this. Now what I need to do is turn on the metronome up here, and in Live 11, 11.1, .1, we've got some new features with metronome. So I'm gonna click this drop down here, count in, I'm gonna set this to none for now, and we can choose between three different clips sounds if we want to. And then for rhythm here, I typically just leave this set to auto, but you could change this to be quarter notes, one bar, half notes. Uh, I would suggest leaving it to auto because based on how you change it, it could really throw off your click. For instance, if it's set to one bar, it's just gonna hit one, and then you're gonna skip two, three, and four, which, what you know, why use a click at that point? So the other thing that's important here for me is to make sure enable only while recording is disabled. Now, how do we adjust our click volume? We're gonna to go to the bottom right corner of our master track here. This is our preview cue volume, and that's where our metronome uh, volume is going to come from. And then how do we route our click and actually use this on stage? Well, uh, we wanna to go to cue out and select the correct output uh, to route that. And we'll talk about routing in just a moment. But how do we actually use this on stage now? So you remember earlier we mapped one to here, two to here. This is really dead simple. To access song one, all I'm gonna do is press one on my keyboard. That's gonna trigger song one. To stop it, I'm gonna press space bar. And as you probably guessed, to select song two, I'm gonna press 
two on my keyboard, and then to press that, I'm going to press spacebar. Now there's other more advanced and maybe even kind of cooler ways to navigate session view, but for now, that's just the quickest, fastest possible way. Uh, again, like I mentioned, to, to make that happen and to get up and running. But now we've got to connect this to our soundboard. We've got to router click, uh, get it to our soundboard, make sure we get it to our in-ears. Um, I've created some great content to show you how to do that already. And I've linked that in the description of the video and also popped it in a card on this video so you could click through and watch that. So if you want to take it a step further, figure out how to connect your computer to your soundboard, complete the process, check out that video. And to see more about how to perform on stage with Ableton Live, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you see when I post that new content every single day at 10 a.m. Central. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.